Just imagine you could travel back through 6,000 years of history to the Neolithic period. Back to an ancient wild land somewhere in southern Britain. Here, the layers of human civilization have been removed, leaving a large patchwork of woodland, grassland, scrub and wetland. The ecosystem bears a resemblance to remaining wild areas of Britain today. Yet within this pond, in a woodland glade drenched in sunlight, you will notice a creature more fitting to the tropics than to Britain, a turtle. The European pond turtle is the world's most northerly living turtle, with a range at that time as far north as southern Sweden. This is a female, and she's a good size. She could be well over 60 years old. She stretches her legs far out to catch as much warmth from the sun as possible. It is the breeding season and a nearby male appears keen on the female and luckily she is receptive. In the water, the male mounts the female, clamping his long claws to her shell. He seduces her by blowing water onto the back of her neck. He slowly moves backward, awaiting her approval. She approves allowing them to mate in a ballet motion under the surface. After an ordeal underwater, a breath of air is much needed. It is now mid-May and other inhabitants of the woodland pool abound, such as these pool and moor frogs species that in modern Britain are extinct. Turtles will prey on frogs, but our female is restless for another reason. She is ready to embark on an annual migration for the deposition of the next generation of turtles. Despite her ambition, an animal stops her dead in her tracks. It's a lone wolf. She freezes using her camouflage to blend in. Cautiously, she checks the surroundings. She is in luck, the wolf is preoccupied and her journey can continue. Mm -hmm. 
After a three kilometer journey, she has made it to the nesting ground. For generations, European pond turtles have laid their eggs on this south facing sandy slope and our female will lay her clutch of 10 to 18 eggs through the night. This sandy slope is maintained by the movements of large herbivores such as wild cattle known as aurochs. They rip up the earth during their breeding season exposing the sand. However, on this occasion, some four months since our female laid her eggs, the ground of the sandy slope is beginning to move for a different reason. A hatchling pond turtle emerges. Being about the size of a 50 pence piece, their first steps are tentative. Then their instinct kicks in. Head for water. This hatchling is reluctant to take the plunge as a predator lurks close by. It's a grass snake. A semi-aquatic snake species, they will feed on young turtles occasionally. It waits, warming itself, its solar-powered body flattening in the sun. It flicks its tongue, tasting the air and locking onto its prey. The turtle makes a dash for it, but luck is not on its side. And the hungry grass snake quickly follows. It will consume the hatchling hole in the cover of the reeds. Although vulnerable to predation, young European pond turtles are predators themselves, feeding on insects, carrion, fish and small amphibians. They forage in the pond, allowing their golden flecking to blend themselves into the murky water, as well as using the water to aid swallowing food. It is unusual the pond turtles hatch this early, this far north. However, this summer has been a scorcher, allowing the turtles to emerge from the nest chamber now rather than the following spring. Over the past few weeks, the sun has baked the landscape to a crisp. This makes it, unfortunately, vulnerable to a rare visitor to these parts. Man. Ever since the arrival of agriculture, man has cleared the land by axe. But the most deadly tool in his arsenal is fire. Systematically, man clears huge areas of forest at a time. This particular area leads straight to the woodland pond. Our female pond turtle is in grave danger after venturing from the pond to bask. She must return immediately.
safe at last in the cool retreat of the pool. European pond turtles managed to cling on for another thousand years in Britain. Yet, through habitat changes facilitated by man and their already present vulnerability to northern climates, they only remain as fossils in museum collections. Like this one, housed in Cambridge University's zoological collection. These fossils give us a better idea of what a wilder Britain was like. And if there's one thing that this story can teach us, it is that every pond, pool, lake or landscape, creatures we could only picture living in a far-flung land now, lived just a short while ago. Hopefully, that wilder kingdom may be recovered once more. As for our female pond turtle in the Neolithic period, she sleeps peacefully through the winter, awaiting the drama of the following spring. <laughs>